So let's all talk and <laughs> the I mean, the Course of Miracles is the the block to self love. I'll try and try and tie it all in. Mm -hmm. And and um, so self. I mean, you could say self self. Uh, we're, we're talking about the true self, you know, the eternal self, the love of the love of the eternal self, the love of being in truth, the love of being in the infinite self or the eternal self. Is the is the you know because the ego hasn't got any love. The ego is the block to love. The ego is the block to experiencing. If you had no ego, if there was no ego now, there would just be a state of infinite presence and love and peace and oneness. Mm. So what creates the block to self-love? It's it's the ego. And what is the ego? The ego is the is 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 anything that ha anything where there is habitual identification with anything in the realm of the limits or that which can pass or change. Okay? So things that can pass or change or that are limited or transitory are things like thoughts, images, feelings, uh, the body, all of these things. Uh, the senses, you know, the Buddha talked about the attachment to the senses. So there's that which witnesses the, atta the attachment to the senses, which is not interested in the senses. You know, also <clears throat> in the thing of uh, relationships, you know, the ego is very much fixated on wanting to get love externally, like validation mm -hmm. or recognition or, or that others recognize one's importance, you know, or feedback or, or whatever. So all of these things are then what I call um, uh, ego conditioning. Ego condition the ego is wired to get things from the outside to feel safe and loved. But self-love is not getting things from the outside to feel safe and love. One is getting it from the, in, you could say, from the inside. So that means one's safety and one's love is guaranteed eternally in all circumstances. Because it's eternal and it's with you all the time. But as soon as you go on your ego, it looks outward for sources of security and love. So if you release your identification and let go of these things being special, then, uh, then you know that tendency to feel disconnected when the the limited world doesn't operate in the way one the ego wants it to becomes less and less uh, traumatizing. You see, so you know, like if I want someone's approval or recognition, then that you know I'm I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be vulnerable to disappointment because really, I mean, the I mean, the esoteric side of things, nothing in the world can be constant. If you hook your, if you hook your sense of self to something which is outside of you, then the universe at some point is going to test it. Even if someone loves you, they're going to die, you know, or something, or you know, they may have a personality change. So, so then to get self-love, you know, you need to release the identification with needing things outside of you to be a certain way. You see, and. Um, if you're going into, like you may have fear of, um, uh, I think one of the important things, you know, if we can talk about human relationships, is the thing of letting go of specialness in human relationships. Um, and so this is, a, this is a big thing. But then, what does that mean? It means then you'll be in a state of love and presence in every moment. You see, it won't be it won't be conditional on getting something from someone or a specific person being there or a specific reaction from someone. It's like um, Eckhart Tolle talks about ego attachment versus love. That's right. It's, yeah, it's, wow. <laughs> that, so true. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah. So you have to put all your attachments on the chopping block to be in that state of ever-present mm. unconditional love, mm. which, which is like, you know, it'd be like, so, you're, so you'd be trading I mean, who wants to be in a state of presence and love for all eternity without that block ever stopping? So then you'd see that it would be good to let go of your, your attachments, which would mean you'd have more love, but there wouldn't be special love. Mm -hmm. So it would mean the giving up of special love, mm -hmm. or even the need for the world to be, treat you in a special way, mm -hmm. you see. Because you'd feel love like, if you don't like me, but I let, I let go of the need for special love from you, 
then I still access the self-love, because the topic was self-love, or the love which is always here, mm -hmm. if I don't make any, if I don't attach to specialness. Mm -hmm. You could say the world is just, I sort of see like, this is a, this is a school for transcendence, you see. Yeah. So it's like, the world will keep testing me with things which my ego might find special, to see if I'll go for it, you know, you see. So it says, okay, you, you still remained in your source, in yourself, in the, the love from within, the sunlight of the spirit or the eternal grace. But the universe will keep testing you. It will go, look, you need special love from that guy, don't you? Mm -hmm. he, he, looked, he looked like he didn't like what you said. Mm -hmm. So you feel hurt now. So mm -hmm. that's like you, lo you lost the... Um, so then the thing would be like I'd have to transcend that special attachment I've got mm -hmm. with you. Can I still feel, can I still reference this, this you know, self-love or God's love or the eternal love? So next time he comes here, I'll be working to make him meaningless. To let go of what is my symbolic specialness. How has my ego created a special relationship with this guy? So that if he likes me, I feel okay. If he doesn't like me, then I feel, I feel bad. You know, I feel like, it's almost like the source of love has abandoned me because he didn't like me. Mm -hmm. So that's like, so my love is projected into this person liking me or not liking me. So he's now, I've, I've, I've projected specialness on him, or higher power, or he's, the, he's my God. So then there, there becomes like, now, now is the test for me to work. Am I willing to cut my specialness that I, I've given him? I've projected power and specialness that he gives me special love. So I feel safe if he, if he, he likes me, but if he doesn't like me one day, I feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. So to get, so then I have to make the commitment to self-love or God's love or the grace or the infinite love or just to, or you could say my dedication is just to stay in the presence, the holy presence or the, the course would call it the holy instant. If I'm in this instant, I'm not in my head, there's a one, holiness means oneness, no, no sense of separation. So if I don't make you special, I don't make me special, I don't make anything special, then there's no sep there's a oneness. And this love is here whether you're here or not. As soon as you've gone, this oneness or this holiness is still here. So in every instant it's here. There's but no there has where I, 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 I end and you begin, you know what I mean? There is no, yes, there is no separation. Do you, you agree with this idea, of, maybe the Course is about sort of that we have this memory of this kind of unconditional Yes. Eternal love and and the love that we experience in special relationships is it, kind of like it's um it's like an echo of it but it's like it's a shadow of it. Shadow. Yeah. It's, yeah. Kind of, it's a murky shadow. Yeah. It yes. Always disappoints. It's, it's yeah. It's well if, if I guess if we're coming at it from the ego, it's kind of going to disappoint. Yes. If it's coming from the ego, it's disappoint yeah. because as soon as you project it outside of yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would say, I would agree with many course teachers, it's a world of transcendence. So as soon as you project it out, at some point you'll be shown that it's not a reliable source to project outwards. Yeah. So if I make my, my good friend here, my source of special love, mm -hmm. and I say, I will feel happy for the rest of my life as long as he likes me. Mm -hmm. Probably, if, it, if you take this as a, wor a world for transcendence, like the universe will ask him, to, to, to help me, <laughs> to help me, because it, it, the universe would say, like, you've got to help him, speak to his soul, you've got to help this guy, because he's like, think, thinks only he's only going to be safe if you like him, so, so, so he's, going to, he's going to do me a favour and say, look, I don't like you anymore today, so. I've been, having, <laughs> I've been having that with my sponsor so much. Yes. I'm, like, literally, you know. Are we okay to be on here? <laughs> okay. But I've been having it with my sponsor so, so much in terms of, I really created, well, he saved my life, he saves me every day, I have to say. Uh, but it, I created that specialness. Yes. And I long for his acceptance and long for that. And I totally projected it on him. Yes. And just now, just today, it happened that he didn't even, even pay attention to me like I wanted it. And I feel like a part of me goes like, yep, that's exactly what I have to go through. Yes. Because it's there's something there, there's that specialness you were talking about yes. that I have to get rid of. It's so interesting. Yes. And I think, you know, one of the things like, you know, like I'm talking about spiritual, I think one of the you know, the, the great thing which I love about all enlightened teachers is they say all they all say the same thing. All enlightened teachers say the same thing. 
there's nothing I need or want in any situation. Mm -hmm. Every enlightened teacher always says that. Yeah. There's nothing I need or want. You know, so this is a great thing for me. Because if, you know, this is the defense against the spiritual ego being special. Can I ask you a question because yes. of that? Do you, yeah. Are you aware of nonviolent communication in Marshall, Marshall Rosenberg, NDC? No, I, lots of people talk to me, but I'm not aware of it. No, I haven't studied about, it. No, it talks about beautiful needs and the kind of, like, almost try to bring a spiritual angle into the idea of us having needs. Yes. Just wondered, because for me it doesn't sit very well with what I see to be actually that our essential nature is one of just giving and not needing, which it seems to be what you're saying there, that all enlightened teachers say that in any situation I don't have needs and wants. That's right. Yeah. All enlightened teachers say they have no need and want. Everyone mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've seen, it, they've always said that, and it's always resonated very strongly in my spirit Yeah. as the thing for growth Yeah. and the defense against spiritual ego. Because as soon as I feel needy or wanting, I know I have to immediately go on you know spiritual work, the spiritual work, yeah. you know, it's very, you know, like wanting approval, wanting people to like me, wanting recognition. As soon as that energy arises, is to release that, you know, because it's 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 the spiritual ego developing, wanting something. That's, that's what actually got me off the path. <laughs> NBC, um, I think. Yes, yes. Well, just, that's what my ego used to get me off the path. <laughs> Right, yeah, no, so it's oh, a way for my needs to come back in through the back door. <laughs> through the back door, yeah. yeah. Because, no, absolutely, if you're in a state of wholeness and presence, yeah. then that's only love. And, and you know, I was, because I'm in, in, I go to 12 step fellowships, which is the energy of addiction. The energy of addiction is the, one of the strongest things. Once you become an addict, you know, that craving, the need, becomes yes. like an obsession. It becomes like my life depends on getting that donut. You know, I'm obsessed about that donut. So you go to the extremity of neediness. You know, and that's the gateway to, for millions of people on the planet to find God. Mm -hmm. That extreme, like, Thank unless you. I get a donut, unless I get that relationship, unless I get that money, unless I get that person, I won't be whole. Extreme you know, because something outside of me will give me that wholeness, and I need it before I can feel whole, which is the opposite of spirituality, in my view that I must get your, you to like me, or I must eat a donut, or I must get a girlfriend before I can feel whole. Yes. And, uh, I think in the MDC language they talk about needs like connection and contribution, and like a need for play. These words are used as being kind of beautiful. Well, I mean, um, well, the need for what would need it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? What I mean would the infinite need it, or would something that was feeling separated? Need well, it always sat with me quite differently. Yeah, it doesn't sit with me very well, and I think yes. that's the reason why. Um, but some people talk quite persuasively about it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not against it. Yeah. I'm not against. It. I think everything has its place. Mm -hmm. But for me, when you come to enlightenment or the course in miracles, when you come to what I call this spiritual vibration, you've got to stay true to that vibration. There's different, like this different vibrations on the planet that you can you can subscribe to. But like when we're going when we're going to the vibration of connecting to the infinite, like you can't hold on to the infinite and separation at the same time. Mm. So that that's why in this in the context of this group, like uh, you know, it's not it's not appropriate. Because it wouldn't fit the two vibrations are yeah. separate vibrations. Yeah. So you're you're connecting I to a source of infinite love and presence. Yeah. I think what you were saying in terms of like the need uh, uh, with others be communicate, uh, community and all of that, mm. I reckon it comes from a different angle uh, because uh, for me this this is more, I need this to be happy, I need this uh, relationship or this person or this community to be happy. Once. Once I get that in my mind, I gotta cancel it right away. My sponsor always tells me, you know, be aware of those thoughts that start with I need. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And no, I agree. what I, I agree. really feel is, yes, mm -hmm. I really feel good when I'm in community mm -hmm. and communicating. Why? Because I'm, when I'm there without ego, I'm being an instrument of God and I'm of service. So I can do that kind of work and to share that. Uh, but mm -hmm. if it comes from a place where I need to go yeah. to see Muji, you know, because if without that I won't be happy. Mm -hmm. That's 
you know, that's, that's, that comes from a different angle. Mm. I get there, every time I get there and it's not enough. Mm. I need a car to get there and it's not enough. Yeah, I think needs are endless when you're coming at it from that angle. Well, that, that, that's the whole thing with addiction. Once yeah. you're in the energy field of neediness, there is nothing that will fill the need. Mm. <clears throat> Because when you're in the energy field <coughs> of, of desire or energy, like you get one donut but it's never enough, then you need another. Or even if you get a relationship, like I really need a relationship, and you get the person, but they after have a while, to be a certain way, don't but then they, they have to be a certain way. <laughs> yeah. So now you've got them that you're happy for a little while, but then they need to change. True. Now they've changed for you, now you're happy for a while, but now you need to change again. Yeah. And then you need to check because it's not it's, you're in a, you're in an energy field of lack. Yeah. So it's, it, the need is only filled temporarily, and then sure. you need more or change or you need to control. So once you get to the infinite place, it's not necessary for you to change at all because you're already uh, you yeah. have no, the infinite doesn't have any needs or wants. Mm. It's only the limited that could ha ever have the idea of it being a limit mm. and needing something to change before it feels whole. So it's coming from uh, a limited source. Mm. Uh, did you want? Did you want to ask anything else, or any, anything else? Because you should be leaving soon. No, I don't think so. I think you answered the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're different. You know, they're all different vibrations. But you know, when you get into enlightenment, we, we do cancelling of beliefs here. So it, it is very much like, you know, you, you don't want to. When you get into the infinite, you don't want to re-believe limited things, if that makes sense. So God, you know, say, say God did not create cancer, it's not real. God did not create limitations, so it's not real. God did not create special relationships, so they're not real. God did not create the need for approval, so it's not real. You know, it says God is the source of my security. Money is not the source of my security. A relationship is not the source of my security. Whether people like me is not the source of my security. You see, and that's actually a statement of truth. When you're connected to the source, the whole universe will take care of you. Mm -hmm. But if you project it onto I need your approval to be happy, you'll go the vibration of the world you'll live in will be fear and separation based. Yeah. And actually the twelve steps is a mystical thing. You, they say, you know, really what's step one, if you ever go to twelve step, yeah, I'm powerless, my life has become man unmanageable, is that when you put your dependency on something outside of yourself, which is not the internal source of God, that literally, being in that vibration, your life literally strips away everything from you. You know, you start to lose your relationships, you lose your job, you lose your, you lose your standing. It's like it's a vibration which is just going to, in that lack vibration, it will, it will just strip everything from you until there's nothing left. Can you repeat the vibration? Sorry, I didn't catch what you said. The, it, the, vibration, the vibration of lack. Yeah. Need, neediness or wanting yeah. or craving or addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually say it in step one, I'm powerless, my life can I'm manageable. Because that vibration will strip everything from you. I mean all addicts know it. Mm -hmm. You know, they've lost their wives, their families, their careers. And you know, when you lose the connection to the source of power of being from God within, mm -hmm. to the extent you project it out, you're you're you you're in a vibration of anti life. Yeah. You see, you're in a vibration. So, like being an addict, I would choose a career which would kill me and stop me. Okay. I would choose foods and eat foods in a way that would kill me. I would be drawn to relationships which would be destructive for me. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's that vibration. It's the vibration of I'm not enough, I have to get it from outside of me. It's actually an energy which will lead to death. It's an anti life error. And when you are in the vibration of you were talking self love enough. You know, I have there is no need or want because I'm plugged into the infinite. You see, and there's you know, as you say, there's enough to give. There's the oneness. There's the love of being in in unity with the, with all of life, being one with life. So there's an infinite supply of love and harmony and compassion. So that's pro life. You know, when an enlightened teacher comes to you know like people visiting Mother Teresa, they would like spontaneously release their cancer. Mm. This is a field of such immense love that just is bursting forth from them. You know, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, Dr. Hugh Len, just he's in such a field of love, he just clears his perceptions of what he sees as, you know, bad or evil or wrong, and then people suddenly, a whole prison of violent criminals get well. Can I ask you a question about contraction and, yes. 
when you're in that moment where you feel like you're contracting, yes, and you're you're aware of it, yes, um, and sometimes I kind of just I try to mechanically sort of tell myself like give love or forgive or accept what is. You know, I have these phrases, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice? of like what to do like in that moment when it's, you know you feel the contraction say it's like a bit of anger or yes. whatever it might be so like like i said um well, there's two main things I do, and I teach them both in this group. One is called Feel the Feelings, feel the feelings yeah. and one is called The Observer. Yeah. And if the feeling is very heavy, then I, I will always use Feel the Feelings. Yeah. And if it's moderate to light, I will often use The Observer. That makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. And so, if there's a heavy feeling suddenly that arises in consciousness, then is, is, and I've done it for many years, don't label or make a story about it. Yeah. No labeling or storytelling. Mm -hmm. You switch off the ego mm -hmm. and you just allow the experience of the energy and the vibrations to be fully felt. This is reassuring like, because this is what I do. There might be a lesson there too. Yes. And after feeling those feelings, yes. yeah. the, the intuition and inspiration will come in the recontextualization. Yeah. So just yeah. allow and don't label, don't allow the ego to make a story and just fully welcome and don't escape. Mm. Fully welcome, don't escape, mm. fully welcome until mm. it passes. So that's what a heavy feeling. Yes. And if it's something uh, moderate to light, often it'll be like, well, even just to say what's witnessing this thought mm -hmm. or what's witnessing this perception or what's, you know, or if there's suddenly like a need for approval from this gentleman, like what's witnessing that? And then suddenly like gone. You know, in the wit because the witnesser do doesn't care whether you know anyone likes you or not. The, you you don't even exist. Your separated self doesn't exist in the witnesser. Mm -hmm. So that will just bust it out because if suddenly there's been ident what's happened is there's been identification with the limited self. Yeah. And I've gone into duality. So there's a separated me wanting something from the separated him. Because I'm in a world of separation. Separate me is real. Separate him is real. And now needs and wants seem to be real as well, because I've entered into the realm of separation. So I, to go to the observer is to bust out yes. of the illusion of separation, and then there's the feeling of oneness again, so and it doesn't exist. really important, what, like the question in terms of all, all my life, a big part of my life, I was just, every time I had a bad feeling, I was trying to escape from it. Yes. Uh, going into that p positive uh, thinking or all of that kind of escaping, I was always escaping him until I started to understand that it's exactly there where there's growth. You yes. Know? It's yeah. exactly there. Like, yeah. Don't don't escape from that. You know. That's right. It's awful sometimes. It takes you deeper into the presence. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah it, there's a gift if you go through any feeling. Like I say, there's God's waiting for you on the other side. Mm. You see, it's a barrier. And the extreme feelings are the biggest gateways to spiritual growth, mm. you know. And, you know, I've been, I was shared, you know, Dr. Hawkins some 16, 17 years ago. I call it feel the feelings, he calls it letting go. But, um, you know, by going through the most extreme feelings that have arisen, operations, panic attacks, mm. those have been like huge leaps in spiritual consciousness. Mm. Because there's a, there's a, there, you know, those things... You know, those things keep you prisoner because you're never willing to go through them mm. your whole life. They're mm. like little traps. And once you go through them and you know that and you've experienced going through them on the other side, life is never the same. Like when I went through panic attacks, and, you know, some, what was it, some ten, 10 years ago, when I tried to give up my food addiction, I started having panic attacks. And when I transcended that, I went through. I was willing to die but not pick up anything and go through a panic attack. Then you know, my, you know, like I'm ten years abstinent from food addiction. I haven't ha essentially haven't had a panic attack for ten years. So they're little illusions that the ego uses to keep you trapped. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, you know, or or fears, yeah. fe fears yeah. or going through, you know, not taking painkillers when one is in pain, and going through that. You know, I the, like I had a like I had. Um, I'll, qu I'll end with I'll stand. I'll just end with this. Like you know, I had a kidney transplant operation, and I had a general anaesthetic. But after the general, I said to the nurse, "I don't want any painkillers because I want to put a morphine pump and put all that stuff." Mm -hmm. and, and they they cut me here. I just felt the pain without any painkillers, and uh, and uh, I used a lot of spiritual tools on that. And then you know, when I got up, 
you know, like the doctor was so amazed that I recovered so quickly. And he said to me, and he, he understood it, he said, you didn't use any painkillers. You know, and, and you, you grow so much by being able to, to know that actually God can handle anything if you're willing to surrender. Because my mm. is tr always trying to escape pain. Yeah. Mm. Does not love, like pain at all. And it's using true. the feel the feelings in everything. I even do it in sports because I resist, resist, resist. Yeah. And once I accept the pain, yeah. So I think so much the idea of the pain is worse than the pain actually is. Yes. You just experience it. That's right. Yeah. Is, like especially emotional pain. Because emotional mm. pain is actually not that bad. No. If, it's, if you just experience it as a sensation, it's like... That's true. It's I mean, fine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Amazing. Going through it's the true. It's yeah. very true. Going through the craving thing, the feel the feelings. Jesus Christ. <sighs> mm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>